Hello and welcome to another episode of Noita Wand Building. Um, I just want to thank everyone for the support and the views and the comments on the previous video. I appreciate it obviously. Today we're going to be focusing on something called the Pollen Powered Spell Generator. Right? Now, you know, I have to teach you this because most of my artistic wands or wand building concepts that I come up with utilize this concept so i'm just going to cast this first wand over here and then we'll get into the explanation right? as usual i have my spell labs and cheat gui because they just make things easy for me so what's happening here is there's a spell generator that's creating a lot of homing death crosses right? Now, we're going to break it down and not look at this complex wand for now. Let's start from the beginning. In Noita, you need to first understand that there are three types of projectile entities. Right? Um, and I just need to clarify that the game itself doesn't make this distinction, but for the purposes of teaching you the generator, you need to understand that you have magical entities, physical entities, and biological entities. So magical entities are just all the spells that you are familiar with, right? It's just some sort of magic. Then you have physical entities like the summon box, summon big box, the propane, and the summon rock. They behave like physical entities just like in the real world they have gravity momentum you can kick them around right and they fall with gravity they have a hitbox and stuff like that right? they are eaten by matter eater and they follow the physics of the physics engine then you have something called biological entities like the deer the ducks pollen and summon rock spirit these are all spells, but it's also enemies. Like you can see the pollen is going towards rock spirit. These spells have a mind of their own, right? So they are biological entities. The next thing I want to tell you about is you obviously know how triggers work, right? I have on this wand, bubble spark with trigger, spawning another bubble spark. And you understand what's happening here. Magical entities can't really trigger a trigger, however physical entities can. If I spawn a box, when I shoot this bubble spark, um, let's use a death cast instead. If I had one. So I'll use death cast instead. <coughs> Spawning that, when I shoot it, it can be triggered on the box. Right? This is just how physical entities interact with the spells. A biological entity like a deer can also interact with your trigger spells. right? So this is just something that you need to understand. Biological entities, these spells that have a mind of their own, can trigger, can like, they can trigger an effect when hit by an ad, uh, like a spell that has a trigger on it. Right? The reason why we want to use pollen is because it moves around very slowly and it doesn't explode or cause blood or um, what's this freezing vapor to leak around. So it's a very stable spell. Right? One thing you need to know if you haven't used pollen is that you can hurt the player. Right? So that is something to take note of. Now if I do that again, I'm going to put a pollen and put a bubble spark. I don't know if I can get it right. You see the bubble spark is not spawning anything. And that's because pollen, when spawned, it's count as part of the player. It's on the player's side. So you can't trigger spells on yourself unless your spell has piercing or bloodlust. So I'm going to add this here. Remember, the, this has to be on the trigger itself. So spawn pollen and let's try and trigger it. You see, when the spell has bloodlust, basically self, um, sorry, friendly fire enabled, you can now trigger on your own pollens. 
So this is just an important concept you need to know about pollen and triggers. Now, instead of using that, I'm going to use pinpoint of light, mainly because it has piercing by default, so it has friendly fire by default. And what I'm going to do is spawn a pollen, and then this pinpoint of light is going to have a trigger. Okay? So cast it, and you can see the pinpoint of light cast. So now, what is the purpose of a generator? Let's imagine that the, the thing that gets triggered from your pinpoint of light includes another pollen. How will that look? So I hope you notice what just happened. Right? We're spawning a pollen. This uh, pinpoint of light is going to trigger whenever it hits something like pollen. It's going to spawn another pollen and a death cross. So when it hits the first pollen, it's spawning more pollens across its movement, across its lifetime and spawning a bunch of death castles. This is the basis of a pollen powered spell generator. Now I have to mention that I didn't come up with this concept, I just found it on the Noita wiki. Um, however, I do think I'm the only one who calls it pollen powered spell generator. Anyway, so that's the basis of this one. Now, the interesting thing is that these spells can have modifiers, right? So if I come over here and add in, let's say, homing, for example. So both of these spells, the pollen and the death cost, are going to have homing. You see how all the death costs have homing? The reason why this is so powerful is because it's kind of like copy trail or a LARPA spell, but where you can add modifiers to it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a double spell at the beginning here so that I don't have to first spawn a pollen and then shoot it. So I'm going to cast them both at once, the pollen and the pinpoint of light, and then they're going to cast my death crosses at once. Right. So that's all good and well. And again, like I said, all of these death crosses could have homing. Or if I wanted to add, let's say, another modifier like downwards lapa, which would probably cause a lot of chaos. Right, do you understand? So this is why it's so powerful. It's almost like you're having a lapa spell, having a bunch of death castles being spawned, but they can all have modifiers. Now, take a look at this one over here. It's the same concept, but instead of spawning Right, so that was the one with the death cast. Instead of death cast, what if I did Nala and return? This exact example was taken from the Noita week. Mm. Right, one number one. Can you see what's happening? Instead of spawning death castles, across the lifetime of this spell, it's spawning in a bunch of Returns, which you're instantly detonating and teleporting me. So it's kind of like a long teleport where across the entire lifetime I can teleport and travel. It's a very useful wand. Right? So this is the basis of the pollen powered spell generator. But this isn't really a generator because the it ends at some point, right? So that's why I want to move your attention to this spell over here. Right? So, this is the same premise, but I'm just going to remove some of the spells that are going to disrupt what I'm trying to explain. So I'm going to remove the glimmers, and basically what's happening is, forget about this, long distance cast, I'm spawning in the pollen, which is the initial starting thing, it's going to be having circle of shielding with piercing, with friendly fire enabled, and it's a trigger. They are being cast together with a double cast. So this first double cast is casting this pollen and this circle of shielding that is friendly fire enabled, so it's gonna hit on this pollen, and it's also a trigger. Now what is this thing gonna trigger? It's gonna trigger double cast, which is gonna trigger the pollen, which is required to keep the momentum of the generator going, and it's gonna cast a long distance cast. Long distance cast also causes another spell to be cast, which is your homing death cast. Okay. So if I cast it 
over here. Wrong one. <laughs> if I cast it over here, you can see what's happening is the the pollen and the circle of shielding are together causing a lot of death crosses to be spawned. This is why I call it pollen powered spell generator. Right? It needs to continuously produce pollen. Everything after this is basically free reign. Right? So you can put whatever you want after the long distance cast. You technically don't need the long distance cast. However, sometimes that will happen or it might break. So you can see here, if I cast it close to the thing, it breaks. Long distance cast kind of prevents that from happening. But you need to be aware, obviously there's certain things you can't use with a pollen powered spell generator. For example, you cannot make use of this spell over here, spells to power. Because spells to power destroy all the nearby projectiles, it's just a self-defeating generator. You also can't make use of explosive detonator, because as well that's going to destroy everything. And you can use explosive spells, but you do need to be careful because certain explosive spells destroy other projectiles. Right? So like, you just have to be aware of that. Right? So this is the basis of power pollen powered spell generator now sometimes because pollen has homing innate homing your this pollen here might flow towards the enemy and the chain can be broken you can restart the chain just by walking into the thing now remember that's gonna hurt you because it is piercing homing. now as you can see the pollen keeps going towards an enemy so you do need to take note that if it's too close to an enemy your pollen might just walk away from the generator right? and as i said everything after the long distance cast can be whatever you want right? it also makes a lot of noise so i'm just going to remove that so let's say i wanted to put that and what i'm going to remove that before it gets out of hand oh they're all over the show <laughs> okay i'm putting in this here just because this wand was a bit fast so you don't need that and I put these two glimmers just to make it invisible so that it looks kind of neat, like it's actually appearing from thin air. So long. Um, that goes there. So it's kind of like the death crosses are just coming out of nowhere, but obviously you don't need to put that there. Right? So that is the basics, basically, of the pollen powered spell generator. However, there's one more thing I want to show you. And before that, like I said, you can put whatever spell it doesn't have to be death cast the important thing is that you are generating multiple spells over and over, over obviously you can see the use for this right if you need to create a lot of healing or if you need to like continuously damage an enemy anyway there's multiple uses for it and i use it a lot in my build which is why i'm showing it to you right? the other the only problem is that it does make a lot of noise which i consider to be a problem but it's not really that major now one last thing I want to show you in this wand over here that wand is basically identical however there's something very important here which is this tentacle with timer okay. so what I want to do is remove the long distance cast for now what it's doing is it's just a pollen powered spell generator it's going to spawn tentacle with timer and the tentacle is going to spawn a colorful, drilling, homing, typical thought. That's going to look something like that. Now what you need to notice is tentacle with timer normally always spawns from the player character. Right? No matter where it is. So if I quickly get a spark bolt with trigger and a tentacle with timer. Spark bolt, tentacle. Oh no. Right. It's not showing for some reason, but tentacle with them always spawns were from the player. If you've ever had an angry ghost like copy tentacle, you'll notice it doesn't spawn from the angry ghost, it spawns from you. Okay, that's just an innate property. However, in this example, the tentacles are spawning from the actual generator. For some reason, whenever you can you keep quiet. So for some reason, whenever you add long distance cars, and whenever tentacle comes from long distance cast, now what do you notice? 
the spells are originating from me as they should be now where am i standing i'm standing very far away from the actual uh, generator but i'm still reaping the benefits because of the tentacle because tentacle must always spawn from the player and it's a timer so it's going to spawn this colorful triplicate bot right obviously you can put whatever you want but this is just a variation of the generator if you want it to spawn away from you obviously if i go too far away they're gonna stop eventually well it should because eventually the game is gonna unload the, the spell like you see there the spell is gonna disappear because the game has unloaded that piece of the terrain right and also when once you come back it might be broken like it's somewhere here because it's invisible i can't show you but you can obviously restart it whenever you go so tentacle allows you to at a distance spawn whatever you want over and over and over from the player character now obviously this can be very useful you can see i can just show you this quickly if i teleport to let's say culprits and i wonder if this does enough damage so i'm going to spawn it over here and as i'm walking throughout the buyer it's shredding the entire buyer my part you can see that right so there is a certain range where if you go too far away the generator will be loaded out of the game and then you won't be able to benefit from it and as you can see i'm very far hello sir I'm <laughs> getting stuck. I'm very far from the generator, but I'm still reaping the benefits. It's still continuously producing the homing triplicate balls. Right? And the range is actually quite big. Like I tested it in Heasy Base. You can basically travel the entire Heasy Base if you spawn it at the start of a holy mountain and it will travel like you can see here I'm at the end of the holy mountain. Um, do I have any way to break through here? Right? And I've entered a new biome and it's survived and it's still continuing. Right? So, and there it stopped. So, when you cast it at the start, it can last for an entire biome. Now, obviously, you don't have to do triplicate wall. I just thought it looked pretty for the example, but you can do whatever you want, obviously. So, that is the basics of the pollen powered spell generator. Obviously, you don't have to do it with pollen, you could, in theory, do it with rock spirit. The only problem is that rock spirit um, it explodes and things that explode tend to mess around with shields like you see there and it has a mind of its own it's, it's, you could do it but it's, I haven't found it to be useful pollen is the most useful spell for this purpose so I hope you learned something maybe if you have any questions leave them down below and as you can see there's a lot of benefit to this and it just the main thing is pollen you don't have to use something like add trigger if you had like a bubble spark with trigger and piercing it could work circle of shielding seems to be the best because it has a very long lifetime and it stands in one place it doesn't move around so you can have your generator in one spot right? um, again if it breaks because you can always walk back into it if it breaks which is a fake one with the box for it. So, like I said, if it does deactivate, you can just walk back into it and it will trigger the effect again. Basically restarting the generator. Obviously it's going to deal damage, so you just need to be aware of that. So that was the basics of the pollen powered spell generator. It has multiple uses. Um, I believe Dunker Slam showed a concept where he spawned in a bunch of wands. I think if I can, I can try to show that. If I had something like. I seen this on one of his videos. Um, I'm looking for. Taika Suve. If I can find it. I don't worry about my dog. <laughs> um, I get so blind when looking at this. 
Is it the other? I think let's type other. Right. So let's do something like that. So let's try and spawn it. I don't know if this will work. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Ignore my dog. <laughs> and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.